the topic for this week is the financial market. We'll be spending both lecture three and four behind this chapter. Uh, so a very brief review, what we did in the last lecture was we took a look at the goods market. And what we saw was obviously that there was a demand for goods that were produced in the economy. We denoted that as Z. There was a supply of goods, which is basically the output or the production in the economy, which was Y. We set them equal to each other. And from there, we were able to calculate the equilibrium level of output in the economy. So today we're going to take a look at the financial market. And basically what we're going to see is that how the demand for money and the supply for money interact together and help us find the interest rate in the economy. It's not difficult. So let's get started. Let's start with demand for money. Which we will denote as MD. Okay. So before we start, we have to make an assumption, a simplifying assumption. And that assumption is that there are only two financial asset uh, available. So what do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean is that we only have money and bonds in the economy. So you can either hold how much you have as money or you can hold it as bonds. So money is of two types. One is currency and the other is a checkable deposit. So let's talk about each of them. You all know what currency is. It's basically notes that we have, a 100 taka note, a 500 taka note, that's currency. So you can either hold your money as currency or you can hold it as a checkable deposit. So these are the current accounts that you can open with banks. You can withdraw this money through your ATMs or uh, your debit cards or you can write checks against it. So basically money that's very easy to take out. And you all know that there are other schemes in a bank. For example, if you have, if you put your money in the bank under a fixed deposit scheme, you can't take that money out very easily. There are multiple steps that you need to fulfill. But getting money out of a checkable account, a current account, it's easy. And obviously money doesn't pay any interest. Now, bonds pay an interest. So bonds are, let's say you invest 100 taka today in a bond and that 100 taka, it's going to be returned to you as let's say 110 taka a year from now. So there's a 10% interest that you can earn. So these are the only two way in which you can hold your money in the economy, either as money or as bonds. And so the question is, which will you prefer? Will you hold more money or will you hold more bonds? And that depends on two factors. So one is your, uh, your number of transactions. And number two is the interest rate on bonds. Okay, let me explain this too. Let's start with number two, interest rate on bonds. Now, obviously it would seem like you want to hold more bonds because bonds are paying you interest rates. So if you're holding 
everything in money and you have a thousand DACA, one year later, you still have a thousand DACA. However, if you're holding this thousand DACA as a bond and this bond is paying you 5% interest, then at the end of the year, you have a thousand fifty DACA. So you've earned something. So based simply on this, you will obviously want to hold everything in bond and nothing in money. But we still hold money. Why do we hold money? Because it's convenient. When you, let's say you go to a store and have a, a cup of coffee, you can't pay for that coffee with bonds. You need money. Uh, so convenience is a big factor. Second of all, there is something called a transaction cost. Now, if you are holding bonds and you want to convert this bond into money to pay for something. First of all, it's time consuming. You can't do it immediately. And second of all, um, how will you convert your bond into money? You will have to sell this bond to someone. So you will probably call your broker, ask him to sell the bond and send you the money. And the broker is going to charge you for the service that he is providing for you. So the reason we want to hold bonds is that it pays an interest, whereas money pays us no interest. But the reason we want to hold money is because it's convenient. And second of all, it doesn't cost us anything. We can make 20 different transactions during a day and it will cost us nothing. But if we have to call our broker 20 times a day, that is going to become very expensive. So depending on how, how high the number of our transactions are, and depending on what interest rate is being paid on bonds, we're going to determine how much money or how much bond we want to hold. If we don't make that many transactions, we won't want to hold that much money 